Hey everyone, welcome over. Today we'll be reviewing some Science Olympiad astronomy questions. Uh, these questions are all taken for the Princeton University Science Olympiad exam, um, a test I recently took, wrote. So if you have any questions, please leave it down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, but otherwise, let's get back into it. Uh, so we have Tiger 46b, an exoplanet, and is orbiting a star, um, Tiger 46, of 2.4 solar masses at a given speed uh, in kilometers a second. Assuming circular orbits, we need to find the distance between the planet and star and express our answer in AU. So yeah, to go right into this, uh, we're going to first draw a little picture. Uh, here is our circular star, and then we're going to have some distance r to an exoplanet, uh, let's say 46b. And now it's given that it's a circular orbit, so we know that the position will look like this, and that does give us the velocity vector for a given point. Um, okay, so we have our picture down, so let's think about the equation that models the system. That equation, uh, it can be derived, but we're going to have it here. It's v equals the square root of g m star, m star, not m planet, we weren't given the mass of the planet, uh, divided by r. So right now I see that we are given uh, speed, we're given mass, uh, these two, and g is a constant, which means we need to solve for r. So solving for r, we can square both sides and get this statement and then we can uh, divide over and get g m star divided by v squared. So we have all our values so all we need to do is plug it in and be very careful about the unit conversions. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to erase this over here, uh, bring this back and let's be careful about our unit conversions. So then r is equal to now g is a constant so we're not going to specify the units but those units can be looked up um, m star is going to be 2.4 solar masses, so we can put it here like that symbol. And in 2.4 solar masses, you have 2.0 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Uh, and you can do that over one solar mass. That is a constant you guys should know. And then we're going to divide that over by v squared, which is going to be 22.2 times 1,000. Uh, this is converting from kilometers a second to meters a second because um, our formula is given in SI units, and then we're going to square it. So let's go plug this into our calculator real quick, and we will get some answer. So I went ahead and did that for you all, and this gives you an R, uh, R value. We'll erase this little picture right here. An R value of R equals 6.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. And you might be a little confused because our answers are in AU, so that means obviously we need to convert to AU. So you have the conversion rate that, uh, let's write this down, that 1 AU is about 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. So let's go ahead and uh, do this into our calculator. Um, we really only need to do 6.5 divided by 1.5 here. Uh, and doing that calculation gives you that R is equal to 4.33 AU. Uh, closest answer to that is going to be this one, which is the correct answer. Okay, let's move on to question two. Uh, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, just shoot it down below. So question two is that Princeton Space Physics Lab is sending a satellite to land on an exoplanet. But this seems to be a really dangerous exoplanet, a uh, stellar system. There's a lot of debris in the solar system. So we're given some information. It can only land on objects that are 3.4 AU from PUSO 17 to avoid the debris. So this is looking a little complex, so let's draw a little quick little picture. We have a star here, and our exoplanet is going to be uh, 17c right here. And so we need to have it so that uh, there's debris in the system. So debris, we can draw like a bunch of little rocks right here. Uh, and we want the condition such that this orbit is essentially eccentric. Uh, eccentric. So you know, we need this value to be at least 3.4 AU, at least 3.4 AU, and because it has an eccentricity of 0 0.4, the orbit's not going to be perfectly circular. So the orbit may look something more like this. And so there could be a lot of debris here at distances of, which we call the perihelion, the closest approach of the planets uh, to the star. But at this distance, we may avoid all the debris um, because we're farther out. So let's go ahead and uh, now that we have some idea that when the star, when the exoplanet is farther away, we'll be safe. But when the exoplanet is very close, we'll be in a lot of danger. 
um, will be in the debris of the system, which is uh, the, given by the 3.4 AU boundary. Um, okay, so to move forward, let's look at the other information the question gave us. So the perihelion distance is 1.6 AU. So that tells us that at closest approach right here, this value is 1.6 AU, and the eccentricity is 0 0.4. So that gives you some orbital parameters. Um, since we have perihelion distance and eccentricity, we can actually calculate the average orbital di uh, distance for this system. So that's going to be equation of A of perihelion distance. A I'm just using to indicate like the distance between the two, and then it's A perihelion is equal to the sem uh, A, which is the semi-major axis, um, multiplied by 1 minus E. So this gives you this value right here. Uh, the student of the color, the perihelion distance of approach, the closest approach to the star. So computing this, we have that, uh, let's see, 1.6, 1.6 AU equals A times 1 minus 0 0.4. So then A equals 1.6 divided by 0 0.6. Right now, I'm not, we're going to get to why we need this information. So 1.6 divided by 0 0.6. So this gives us that A is equal to 2.667 AU. And you might say, okay, what does that tell us? You know, we need to know basically uh, at the aphelion distance, the distance of farthest approach, if we're going to be outside the debris disk of the system. So at aphelion, um, this value, are we greater than uh, the 3.4 AU boundary condition? And aphelion uh, is related to the semi major axis and the eccentricity of a system. So let's go ahead and write what that equation is. Um, aphelion is basically like, no matter what, we will be safe there. Uh, no debris will be harming us. So let's make a little quick note. You see here that we have um, 1 minus e. Aphelion is an equation given by 1 plus e. So let's really quickly do that. That's not going to work. One second. Perfect. Okay, we're going to resize that and then fill in this a one more time. That's unfortunate. Okay, so now we have that uh, the aphelion distance is going to be a aphelion, which is going to be basically the ideal distance we want here, is equal to uh, a times 1 plus e. So we have all our values. So we have 2.667 au times 1 plus 0 0.4 equal to a aphelion. And if we put this into our calculator, uh, we're going to get that aphelion is equal to 3.733 AU. Now, let's look at our answer options. So we have, yes, the aphelion distance is 3.7 AU, which is what we want. So essentially, let's say that the value we computed here, if we computed it to be 3.3 AU, well, 3.3 AU would be inside this uh, debris disk zone we would be in this very dangerous area. So no, the rocket ship wouldn't be able to land. Um, same thing for 3.2 AU. If we were at 3.5 AU, we would be a little safer. We'd be away from the debris, um, but the exoplanet isn't there. Uh, it might be there at another point. Um, but that's not the aphelion distance. The aphelion distance is strictly uh, given by this formula we have here. And when we do the calculation, we find that it's 3.7 AU and that uh, this Scully satellite will be safe. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This one's a little bit easier. Um, so this is a Kepler second law question. It basically gives you that uh, this has some area, and then this has some area. And if it takes this time to travel here, how long does it take to travel here? Um, this is just a simple application if you guys uh, know about Kepler second law. So it basically says that dA over dt is equal to some constant. There's another formulation for this, but this is always true for uh, these elliptical orbit systems. And it's actually true for a, a bunch of other reasons. Kepler's second law is very powerful. Um, but anyways, so if dA dt is a constant, let's consider uh, we can create a proportion out of this because it'll be true for any portion of the system. So we can say dA1 over dt1 is equal to, uh, we can actually make this a and b just to be more clear. A, a is equal to dA of section B divided by DT of section B. So DA of A is 43.54 AU. So 43.54 AU squared, I should say. Um, AU squared. DTA 
is 143 days. We can actually leave it in units of days. That's fine, um, especially since our answer is in days. So we can put days here. And then DA of B is of 17.49 AU squared. And the distance, the time period is going to be DT of B. So we can solve for DT of B, um, just multiplying over. Uh, 17.49 times 143 divided by 43.54. So let's go do this on our calculator real quick. Uh, multiplied by that, 143, do that, and we get 57.44 days, which is an answer choice, so we're good. Um, quick little problem, but it's important to know Kepler's second law. Okay, here's the final question. This is going to be Kepler's third law problem. Um, we seem to have an exoplanet orbiting a period of 584 days at a semi-major axis of 1.78 AU. Um, we need to find the orbital period of another exoplanet. So this is a different one at a different se semi-major axis, and we're given some information about the star. Um, this assumption is just standard. It uh, makes the comput computation much easier. Um, okay, so working off of this, let's consider... If we're given days and semi-major axis, this is going to be... Kepler's third law problem. So let's write what Kepler's third law is um, in terms of uh, what's the easier form. There's two ways to write the form third law. You can do 2t squared, 4 pi a cubed over gm. I think this is squared too. Um, this is the SI unit way, but for this problem, we're going to use uh, years and um, semi-major axis and AU astronomical units. So we're going to write it like this. Now, this is the mass of your system. So right now we're working with an exoplanet, which means that we don't necessarily know if we're dealing with one solar mass. Um, in this case, we need to check and verify if we're dealing with one solar mass or not, because uh, we may not have a system that works out um, like it does uh, for our individual solar system um, based on this coefficient m right here. So, okay, let's go see what we're dealing with. Um, so we have P squared equals A cubed divided by M in solar masses. That gives us 584 divided by 365 squared. So this is just a conversion um, from days to years because uh, the way we're formulating this third law problem is that it's in, it needs to be in years. And then that's equal to 1.78 AU cubed. I should write days here and then I guess this should be days a year but whatever, it's okay. Uh, and then divided by the mass of our star. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute this. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. 584 divided by 365 squared divided by 1.78 cubed. And then take the one over that. Okay, so we get the mass of the star is equal to 2.2 solar masses, um, which kind of makes sense because we said it's a spectral type A star. So because it's a spectral type A, it should definitely be heavier uh, than the sun. Okay, so now we understand this part of the system. Um, I should have really drawn a picture here. If we wanted to draw a picture, it'd be star, then exoplanet uh, 87b, and maybe exoplanet here, uh, 87c, where this is 24 AU, and this one is... Uh, 1.78 AU. Huge difference, actually, um, surprisingly. So this picture isn't a scale, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so let's just finish off our computation. Uh, we have P squared is equal to A cubed over M. Right now we're solving for P. So let's go ahead and compute that. That's going to be P is equal to square root of, uh, what is it, 24? Yeah. Yeah, 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 24 cubed uh, divided by, this should be AU cubed anyways, cubed divided by 2.2 solar masses. So let's go do this on our calculator real, real quick. 24 divided by 2.2, take the square root, and we get uh, 79.2 years, which is the correct answer. Okay, everyone, that's uh, our four problems for today. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope these problems were pretty engaging, and... Uh, Good job. Keep studying astronomy.